be at home for a reason. Let her enjoy her day. Amen. Everybody, all of a sudden, is a news reporter. Amen. If you want to report news, take up journalism and go put your application in. And you can be a news reporter. Amen. But you don't have to be snitching on nobody in the house. Amen. In the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Amen. Beginning with the first verse. I'm going to tell you in just a second. Amen. Amen. Hello, Bishop Hogan. Bishop Baldwin, amen, and his companion. Amen yeah. to Bishop Matthews. Amen yeah. to Elder Wombo. Amen yeah. to every minister in the house. Every elder. Every mother. Every child. Amen. To my own. Amen. To my oldest sister. Amen. She, she don't want to be, but she is. Amen. Yeah. To Minister Laverne. Amen. Yeah. To my nephew, Jimmy.
and the abandoned cities that have become prey and an object of derision to the rest of the nations round about. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, surely I have spoken in the fire of my zeal against the rest of the nations and against all Edom, who with great joy and utter contempt have made my land their property and prey because of its pasture. Therefore, prophesy again concerning the land of Israel, and say to the mountains and to the hills, and the ravines and the valleys, this is what the sovereign Lord says, look, I have spoken with my zeal and in my anger, because you have endured the insults of the nations. So this is what the sovereign Lord will say, I vow that the nations around you will endure insults as well. But you, O mountain of Israel, will grow your branches and bear your fruit for my people Israel, for they will arrive soon. For indeed, I am on your side. I will turn to you and you will be plowed and planted. I will multiply your people, the whole house of Israel, all of it. For the cities will be populated and the ruins will be built. I will increase the number of people and the animals on you. They will increase and be fruitful. I will cause you to be inhabited as the ancient times and will do more good for you than at the beginning of your history. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Amen. Going to the 15th verse. I will no longer subject you to the nations of insults. No longer will you bear the shame of the people and no longer will you bereave your nation, declares the sovereign Lord. Bear with me. Go down to the 21st verse. I was concerned for my holy uh, reputation, which the house of Israel profaned amongst the nations where they went. Therefore, I will say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake that I'm about to enact, O house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy reputation, which you have profaned amongst the nations where you went. I will magnify my great name that has been profaned amongst the nations, which you have profaned among them. The nations will know that I am the Lord, the care, declares the sovereign Lord, when I magnify myself against you. For you will be my people and I will be your God. Amen. Bear with me just a little bit longer. This is what the sovereign Lord says in verse 33. I will cleanse you from all of your sins. I'm going to populate the cities and the ruins will be rebuilt. The desolation, the land, the desolated land will be plowed. Instead of being desolate in the sight of everyone who passes by, they will say, this desolate land has become the Garden of Eden. Right. The ruined desolate and the destroyed cities are now fortified and inhabited. For then the nations that remain around you will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruins and replanted what was desolated. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. This is what the sovereign Lord God says. I will allow the house of Israel to ask me to do this for them. And I will multiply their people like sheep. Like the sheep for offerings, like the sheep of Jerusalem during her appointed feast. So the ruined cities will be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. I want to give you a couple of definitions and then we're going to get into the word. Prophesy means to declare the divine inspiration. It's a declaration of a future event, which means sometimes we just need to speak it when we're prophesying. When we talk about being desolate, that means you're barren or you're deprived, you're abandoned, forsaken or empty and uninhabited. The possession is the ownership occupied with or without rights. Infamy is a bad re reputation and reproach. When we talk about being the avenger, it is the one who takes revenge for an offense. As vengeance is the affliction of injury, harm, or humiliation with force or violence, or greatly, um, or to extremely do something. When we talk about replenishing, it's the act or process of resupplying, refilling, or renewing. And restore means to bring back to the formal and original or normal condition. And for my topic, it is God, the avenger, his vengeance, and his restoration. So when we talk about being uh, prophesying, we talk about speaking. Sometimes we got to speak our way out of some things. And the enemy is taunting us in this hour. 
And a lot of times when you're going through, it's hard to begin to speak because of what you see, because of what you feel, what you hear, and what you know, or what appears to be real or reality. So sometimes they're being taunted by the enemy while he's speaking against what's already been put in the place. Satan is crafty, he's conniving, and he's cunning. And he will speak so in a manner that it feels like he has a strap. He speaks with an unauthorized authority as if he has been given or granted to hold us in a certain position. Boisterously, he claims, aha. So equivalent to that would be like when you tell your children something and they keep doing it and then they get hurt and you're like, uh-huh, I told you. But you just wouldn't listen. The enemy right now is saying aha to some of us because we're in a place, we're in a position and the enemy thinks boisterously by saying aha that he has us right where he wants us but he don't know that we serve a God that's getting ready to bring us out. Oftentimes it's in these moments where you and I will panic. Satan often speak into our mind making us look at our situation and asking us, where is you keep calling on, that you keep trying to convince me is getting ready to bring you out of this thing. The enemy has us up against the wall, it feels like, and keeps taunting us with his words. I thought you said your God was going to bring you out. You quote scriptures and you cry, but your God ain't moving on your behalf. Aha, I got you right where I want you. That aha moment sometimes is mad when doubt takes over or we're living in uncertainty or when that kicks in and it seems like there's a deadline or that uh, sometimes it's a bill that has to be paid and the deadline is here and the money that we knew God was going to give us, it has not come to fruition yet. Many of us are in that place. Sometimes, amen, it's equivalent, amen, to when the enemy traps us or we feel trapped, we sometimes feel like we got to now come up with a plan of how to get out of this. We don't wait on God, but we try to figure out how to get out of this thing that we asking God to get us out of. And we try to help God be God and do what God can do. So when we go to verse 3, it speaks about uh, the prophecy or prophesying. Anyway, you say that you have to speak your way out of it. For God will tell us that my ways are not your ways, and neither my thoughts your thoughts. But because of what they have done or what they did, and what they have said, sometimes we try to, or the enemy will make us think that we are overtaken. Because of the ruin or because of the way things look physically, they, what they have tried to do will sometimes cause us to forget where we are in God. We all in a season right now. I don't know what your season is, but I know what mine is. And a lot of times in these seasons, when we get into them, we don't know where to go or we don't know how to go, especially if it's an unfamiliar season to us. We know that we need to pray. We know that we need to seek the word. We know we need to seek God through the word. We know we need to fast. But there are times when our back is up against the wall that our prayer just can't be mud. We don't have the strength to pray. We don't have the mind to get on our knees and give God amen, that sacrificial prayer and then stay there until we get peace about the situation. It's in that aha moment that we feel trapped. But the plots of our adversary have become greater. They're more numerous and they appear more enormous. Feeling overtaken by some things, we become troubled on every side. And the breaking story, amen, it appears like we are the, the breaking news. Everything that is happening with us is now being magnified, blown up right before us. Amen, y'all just pray with me. We're going somewhere. People are speaking more against and about you than for you. Speaking profanely without reverence, without much uh, and much disrespect. Being reckless and disrespectful.
our hearts and minds become a, a mode of panic. And we begin to be troubled. But the enemy will have your name in the mouth of naysayers. People that don't even have the mindset to pray. And even if they did, because now you become an object uh, of conversation. Now all of a sudden we're not praying for you. We are praying on you. There's a difference between P-R-A-Y and P-R-E-Y. Treat you like you're an animal out in the wilderness. And they run up behind you, trying to kill you, kill your character, kill everything that you know you stand for. I know that I'm saved. If I made a mistake, let me make my mistake. The Bible says, come to me and help me get it right. In the spirit of meekness, you come to me. Situation solving. And I know what it's like. 
when your back is up against the wall. I know what it feels like to be in a situation where you wanted God to move. You know he can, but your faith is not there yet. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I'm right here. I'm sending out an SOS. I'm right here, God, and I need you to move. And here we are. Waiting on the move of God. And 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 and 7 says, Seeing it as a righteous thing with God, He's going to repay tribulation to them that are troubling you. You too good to try to fight other folks, but I'm telling you, God is getting ready to block somebody's eye on your behalf. God is getting ready to push somebody down. God is getting ready to move an obstacle. Check my 
myself. Anybody ever do inventory on you? Yeah. And then when you count up the stuff that you got blocked in your prayers, you just say, hold on, God, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. When God shows you the things that's blocking what you ask him, give me a minute. I'll be right back, Jesus. I need to go back and take five and get some stuff right. And then I'll come back and pray. We too busy going before God and we know we got trash in our heart. Clean up your heart before you ask God to do anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Situations and circumstances and life can cause us to feel like, amen, God ain't around or God ain't hearing us. Amen. But Deuteronomy 31 and 8 tells us that God's word says he won't leave us, nor will he forsake us. God say, I'm the one and that got you in this situation that you're in. I got your back. When we're fighting, you ever been in a fight and you look at your opponent? Amen. I never did get into too many fights, but it was always people that were taller and bigger than me that wanted to fight. I said, now you know this ain't going to match up right. Like you got two feet on me. So then you got that friend that's standing beside you and be like, don't worry about it. You take the little one and I'll take the big one.
that the enemy has us in this place. But don't worry about it because the Bible says that vengeance is mine and I will repay. So then we come to this part where we look like everything around us, according to the word, is dead. There's no light. And it's funny because how sometimes when you're in that situation, God has already provided, but we can't see it. So while everything around you seems barren, and it looks deprived and looks desolate, and it's in ruins, God is restored right before your eyes. But because you are focused on the problem versus the promise, you won't see it. Permission has been granted to try you beyond what you can imagine or fathom, but I need to see, God will want to see how you're going to hold out and how you're going to hold on. And while it looks like God is saying, God is stepping back, he's saying to you, I'm going to restore, and I'm going to restore you right where you're at. Right in that desolate place where it looks like nothing is happening. Right in the valley of decision. Why are you torn between two decisions? Should I do this, God, or should I do that? God is getting ready to meet you right where you are. Don't you worry about it. God is coming through for you. God is going to water you right where, amen, the soul appears to be dry. And it looks like there's no help, no hope, no nothing. But God is getting ready to break over the dams. Amen. You know how when they let the water out, when the song says, open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. God is getting ready to flood your situation. And today I pray, amen, that 
began to talk from the word. Because in this sea, in this thing that looks like a drought, don't you worry about it. It might look dry. But all it takes is God to push one button and that water's coming in. And God is going to bring on your situation and he's going to bring it to life. Amen. If there be anyone that needs to have prayer or come to the altar, amen, now is the time. If you don't have a church home, and this is the best place that you can be. If you have a church home and you're not coming like you should, the altar is a great place to come back and recommend yourself unto God. We in a season, and I'm telling you right now, unless we get before God, and unless we get into his presence, things are not going to work like we want them to work. And the enemy has not given up. Because time is winding up for everybody. And then just for the enemy, it's winding up for us all. And once judgment has been set, it cannot be changed. So God, I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for not doing the things that I should have done. And I repent. And I ask you to come into my heart. And Lord God, I make you my Lord and my Savior. And I announce you my Savior, Jesus in Christ. Father, we thank you and we praise you for those that are here, God. And we honor you, God, for those that have the desire to be here. Now quicken us, God, and even in the season that we're in, Flourish us right where we are in Jesus' name. Amen.
bread together. Now we can do the benediction. May the Lord watch between me and me while we're absent from coming out. But now we ask you to cover us, oh God, throughout the course of this week. Continue to cover and shield us, oh God, wherever we are, wherever we may be. Father, we ask you to dispatch your warm angels on our man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh.